Come, you blessed of my Father, says the Lord. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Good morning, Father. We're racing back and forth, getting our steps in this morning, weren't we, Richard? Yeah. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Maximilian Colby, martyr. Great story, great giver of, of love to that particular person back so many years ago. My brothers and sisters, Jesus asks us, would you die for me? It's a question that was asked of Maximilian Colby, and he said yes. In that situation, something to ponder on. Brothers and sisters, Jesus asks us to be his disciples in this world, to be people of love and courage and forgiveness, willingness, tolerance. We're also here acknowledging our sins and failings, and so once more we're here together preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, St. Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, with a zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord to Jerusalem, by origin and birth, you are the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed your hair had grown, but you were still stark naked. Again I passed by and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered gown, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen silk and embroidered cloth, fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the, among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was. Because of my splendor, I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot. And you lavished with your harlotry on every, on every passerby. 
whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you, that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silenced for shame. When I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have turned, you have turned from your anger. You have you have turned turned from from anger. Indeed, God is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You have turned, turned from your anger. anger. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You have turned from your anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You have turned from your anger. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, have you not read that from the beginning, that the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Both of today's readings speak to the idea of covenant, covenant, God's covenant with his people, and a married couple's covenant with each other. It is a perpetual promise, a covenant, one that can't be broken. It is a total commitment that becomes a way of life, visible in the choices we make and the way we live. Today is the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, born in 1894 in Poland. Some of you may know that. Died at the age of 47. Where? In the German concentration camp of Auschwitz, located in German-occupied Poland during World War II. He died there because he chose to take the place of another man set to be executed. Wow. When a prisoner escaped, the camp commander retaliated by ordering that 10 men be moved to an underground bunker until they starved to death. When one of those chosen voiced despair about his wife and children, Maximilian stepped forward and asked to take his place. It's said that throughout the ordeal, he led the group in prayer and comforted them in their fear and misery. After two weeks with no food and water, Maximilian was the only man left, still alive, still praying. He was given a lethal injection and died. 
How much longer would Maximilian have lasted? Hmm. Maximilian Kolbe lived and died in a way that made his covenant with God visible and truly life-giving. The man he saved survived the war and lived to the ripe age of 93, spending his life proclaiming that he would never forget the heroic act of love by the man who died for him. St. Maximilian Kolbe gave his life to save another, just as Jesus gave his life to save us. He models for us the unconditional love that God has always freely given to us. God calls us to do the same. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. Please stand. Join together in God's holy presence, we pray for the needs of this assembly, the church, and the world. For all members of our holy church, may God look graciously upon our efforts and needs in serving his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit lead them in the ways of charity and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples who face difficulties, may God's grace give them strength in their work towards reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, as we celebrate this feast of St. Maximilian Colby, may God imbue in us a sacrificial love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, especially for Dick Unfried, may they find eternal joy and comfort in the presence of God our Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all special needs and intentions, we hold in the silence and stillness of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for more vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray for all of our seminarians, especially our seminarian. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask that you look favorably on the prayers of this assembly and grant them according to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in George may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian Colby to offer our very lives to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Maximilian, poured out by Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy and the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his brother, Bishop Timothy, and Thomas, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Maximilian Colby, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you, sir. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, we enter under my room.
か。The body of Christ. The 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 body is right. The body is right. The body is Let us pray together the act of spiritual communion for our family and friends watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian Colby received from this holy banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. I think, is this your last day with us as far as Mass? Or do we? I believe so. You believe so. Seth London, he's our new seminarian who was prayed for today and has been ever since I met him. Uh, and I would ask for your prayers for him also. It's going to Mount Angel Seminary in Oregon, in Benedict, Oregon, uh, as a first-year college student in formation up there. So congratulations, and we'll pray for you. And we'll post his uh, his information, his contact information, if you'd like to send him well with you. So congratulations to you. <laughs> what a gift for all of us, no doubt. Uh, tomorrow is the Feast of the Assumption, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And normal circumstances would be obligatory, but not tomorrow because it's Saturday and the way it falls on the calendar. But I'm going to offer Mass here tomorrow morning at 8.30, just like this, okay? And with confessions afterward. I will not be here in the afternoon. 
I'll be celebrating with my dad and brothers and sisters. My dad's 94th birthday is, 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 is tomorrow. So but Mass at 8.30 for our Blessed Mother uh, and confessions afterwards. Father Charles was alone uh, in the afternoon, so be, be, be nice to him. <laughs> Let's uh, ask our dear St. Michael to give us a hand in our own personal strife. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great day.